Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Rajesh. Uh, basically, I work for Waters in the uh, past 13 years. In the past two years, I'm working for Waters in Dubai. Today, I'll be just going through the multi residue pesticide analysis because uh, my basic work that I support the customers uh, in working on the multi residue pesticide analysis throughout the region. So, I'll be just going through the uh, slides uh, just to make you to understand that. What kind of workflow is there for the pesticide uh, and multi residue analysis? So, if you see the pesticide analysis, there are two workflows. In fact, one is a qualitative workflow, another one is a quantitative workflow. Dr. Raja, uh, there are comments from colleagues that uh, if you could get closer perhaps to the board because you're. Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the microphone is not able to pick as well. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So, okay. Oh, it's better for me. Okay. So if you look at uh, pesticide analysis, there are two uh, different procedures, what you adapt in fact in your regular practices. Uh, one is a qualitative and another one is a quantitative workflows. When you say qualitative workflow, you are trying to screen the process, it means to try to understand that what kind of pesticides are present or absent, it is completely qualitative. In fact, this works on time of flight machines, where you need to go for the mass accuracy in fact. So we need to see that what is the elemental composition of a compound to understand that whether this molecule is present or absent. So there are many procedures which, are, which is called a, a targeted and non-targeted screening in fact. When you say targeted screening, you are going to compare the things with the library. You have already the library of pesticides. You try to see that whether which molecule will exactly set this uh, particular uh, uh, molecule of interest what you are looking for. And at the same time, if you see a quantitative workflow, it's completely different where we are trying to match the standard with the sample. So we are trying to see that completely it is a quantitative because we are going to run the standards, compare with the sample and understand that what concentration is there. Why we require that? We have a limits. And so we say maximum residue limit. Uh, so maximum uh, residue permissible limit. So that's what we, we call it as you know uh, MRL and MRPL. So MRPL is this absolutely should be zero. MRL is limit of 10 ppb, some of the guidelines say. So in that case, we are trying to understand that what kind of concentration is available. So there are different softwares to support from waters, in fact. From different vendors, we have a different software which supports these kind of workflows, in fact. If you see uh, the extraction process, when you see, you have a different matrices in the market. So you have, very you have to see in, in case of vegetables, you know, whatever the products you are going to consume, consume, consume as a food. So we need to see that whether these pesticides present or absent. So in that case, what kind of extraction protocols you need to follow? There are many protocols like sulfate extraction, liquid, liquid extraction and cultures. So if you see that there are many machines, instruments which are involved and are, at the same time, a lot of, you know, uh, softwares which are essentially supports in doing this analysis. So there are mass specs which are, you know, uh, in fact, uh, the TKS micro is one of the machine we, we prefer to for the quantitative. And we have a lot of qualitative uh, workflows where we can use it as a uh, zero uh, G2 excess Q top, which is a bench top models. Where we can, if you see this the system, where you can perform the a liquid chromatography as well as the gas chromatography on the same machine, in fact. So you can use for the polar as well as non-polar pesticides, because they are the two different, uh, you know, uh, way we call, you know, polar pesticides, which they go in the liquid chromatography, and non-polar uh, pesticides will go in the gas chromatography. So this is how we know that the same machine can perform the two things on the same on same system, where the polar and non-polar pesticide can be done. At the same time, you have a lot of softwares which are essentially to do the screening process. At the same time, the quantitative workflows. And if you see here, there are many extraction protocols can be followed from the biases at the same time, cultures, and we have everything, like the complete solution, like a premier columns. So these are all things involved in your analysis. That's what I mean to hear. So why the mass spectrometry really required for the multi residue analysis? This is a very important topic. So when you say we have, you know, 20, 30 years back, there was no much mass spec used in the food safety analysis. If you see, go back, we have a, a, a liquid chromatography with a UV fluorescence still today. They are still they are used, in fact, for the analysis. When you say multi-residue analysis, definitely we require to see, look on the mass spec because we cannot make a great separation. 
because they are on absorbance based. At the same time, we have so, so many assays like immunoassays can be done, but still, the, you know, uh, you, you cannot get the specificity that's very important in, in case of doing the analysis for the pesticides. If you have multi analytes, this, this amino, amino acid can, cannot work so better, in fact, I can say. Then if you look at the LCMS, it is really a great machine, in fact, compared to the, uh, uh, you know, UV or, you know, fluorescence, whatever the other uh, way of detection. So here, the thing is, we are going to work on the multiple reaction monitoring. It doesn't matter if the, if the um, peak is eluted at the same detection time or 100 peaks eluted at the same detection time. Still, we, can, we are going to separate them by the mass by charge ratio, where you have a qualifier ion and also the quantifier ion. So these are the things we involved here to make the qualitative tool to understand the molecule is present or absent. At the same time, we, uh, the ion ratio actually explains you that whether it is matching with the standard or not. So if there is some, some peak elute in the matrix, so if, there, if it doesn't match with the ion ratio, definitely that sample is you know, not failed for the particular test. So these are the things that are involved in the LCMS and it's very easy, in fact, you, are, you have a very less runtime, and then you can screen the 400 to 500 pesticides in single shot. These are the greatest advantages when you see the LCMS system. So I'll be just going a little bit uh, more fast, but I just want to see, uh, tell you that what are the difficulties? You know, there are many challenges. You know, when you say when you work on the pesticide analysis, these are the challenges you feel, you find. You know, you have to follow some regulations, and you know, your matrices are different. Day to day work is different. Tomorrow you are going to get different matrices. But how I can conclude the things very easily and very fast? In fact, that's very important. Because no other scientist can perform. You know, can work like this, like every day with one different kind of matrices. The greatest difficulty the food safety scientists who are working in the lab they face day to day the matrix difference because they don't know what which matrix will essentially supports for their method, in fact. So these are the difficulties, and at the same time, how to come away, come out of those difficulties. It's not so easy, like, you know, if you say uh, uh, bioanalysis, I'm basically a bioanalytical scientist, where I work on a simple uh, two or three different matrices, plasma, urine, or serum. But here, if you see, every day, every, you know, uh, analysis has to be conducted on a different, different matrices. Every matrix has its own a matrix effect on the mass spec. At the same time, it's very difficult for every scientist to work. And these are the uh, things which are really challenging. And the regulations are going to be changing every day. Maybe next year, you will see a complete different regulations come up. And if you see, there are, you know, if I take a polar pesticide as an example, the polar pesticides, which were, uh, you know, analyzed at PPM level, maybe four to five years back. And now today, the regulation change it has come to 10 ppb. So these are the things, changes uh, day to day, and those things we need to adapt very easily, and you should be able to produce the results according to the regulatory requirement. And this is what the impact, you know, the, see, the demand is very, uh, you know, uh, a great demand for the scientists who are working in the lab, and they had to work on the many uh, analytes, you know, and method performance, matrix to matrix, these are all the things, you know, difficulties what the laboratory scientists go for, uh, when you go through, in fact. And, of course, the Sante has given you a lot of information, the guidelines clearly explains that these are the things, the, you know, they maintain the harmony for uh, all the uh, food safety scientists, but they had to follow some certain regulations for the food, food and feed, and they do the same for everyone. They have easily, you know, clearly mentioned that what kind of regulations they have to follow, what are the residue limits, all these things are explained very clearly by the side At the same time, you know, these are the, I'm just trying to show you that how many different commodities who are the scientists who are working in the uh, food safety lab. So there are many commodities and then they had to work on these different commodities with a multi-residue testing. It's not simple, you know, even antibiotics, if you are saying, there are more than 100 antibiotics they are checking in every, you uh, know, the milk and milk products and the animal feed. So these are the things, you know, aflatoxins they are checking. So all these things are, you know, multi-residues only. They're all, you know, you need to be able to analyze them to the level of the requirement. And of course, what is has, you know, we have, we promote a lot of, you know, instruments. 
But here, the TKS microbe stands on the top for the pesticide multi residue analysis. At the same time, the top end TQX system, which is really required for the sensitivity purpose. But these are the instruments what we regularly use from the water side. And if you see the key challenges of a scientist who is working in the lab, so he has to keep the uptime very fast, and then the system has to perform the requirement according to the scientist. And they have to be, you know, uh, like, you know, sample processing and turnaround on time is very important because you got the sample today and tomorrow you need to be in a position to produce the results. And the method has to be transferred from one system to another system very fast. So these are the quick requirements of the scientists. And if you see 20 years back to tune the compounds, one or two compounds, it used to take one or two days. I'm correct. If you are tuning the compounds, it really takes a much time, in fact. And now it's nothing like that. We have something like, you no, know, some protocols can be followed very fast. And we can try to transfer the method very fast and quickly can develop the method also. So something, you know, very important, like, like, like this kind of tool, like SK mode like tool. If you see here, you can do this analysis of uh, polar and non-polar pesticides in a single run. Where if you see, if you see that APCI mode, and ESI mode, APC supports the non-polar content and ESI uh, supports the uh, polar content. We can do both of them in a single shot just to know that whether the, uh, what is the kind of ionizability of these molecules. So it's very important for a scientist. It's a quick way of doing that, uh, referring that, okay, whether this molecule is polar or non-polar, which mode I should be using this uh, analysis. So this is how one of the example, you can, you can see multiple things can be done in a single shot. It's not so easy. In 20 years back, we were not able to see this kind of workflows. And if you see that uh, uh, the TKS micro, preferably, and it is just made for the only for the multi residue analysis. And it has so many uh, features like IntelliStart, One PDR, QC Monitor, Target uh, Links, and Trend Plot. These are all the things which are re actually required for the scientists who can quickly start their analysis and they have to they can use the library. And they can just use the QC monitor kind of workflows and reporting. It's very fast. We can do it. Trend plot, I was saying, just like, like you will not see everything. You just see the plot, whether this particular analyte of uh, interest is increased or decreased, or at the same time, whether this particular sample is passing or failing. These kind of things can be done very fast on the trend plot. So it is the, like a quick start way I said, if you want to tune the compounds, new compounds come into the picture. So you can tune this compounds just like Intel start software. It just allows the system to tune the compounds and within a less time and produce the MRM conditions. What are the optimum conditions of the mass state? It's very easy for us to do that. At the same time, this is the kind of library what you required. We already tuned something like, you no, know, many, many vendors are doing this actually. They are tuning the compounds, keeping the MRM conditions and they are also keeping the liquid chromatographic condition. Here, the Quanpedia is the one thing is a database. It supports any scientists who are working for 500 pesticides, 200, 600 pesticides in single day. No need to work on the three, four days. Even single day is sufficient. You can straight away put this method, straight away transfer the method and screen for the analysis. That means there is a things called like, you know, the transitions, liquid chromatographic condition, column condition, everything is stored in the library. So just pick the method into the drop into the method into the mass spec and then straight away do the analysis. And target links is one of the best software. What exactly does it, it actually you know, uh, quantify the things and make the reporting in, in no time. In fact, it's very easy for us to do the quantification and calibration. Everything can be done by the target links. And this is the one of the uh, why I'm just uh, insisting on this one. When you are doing a method development, usually the people does the uh, you know uh, matrix effect. Matrix effect is nothing but one of the tools which is important for us to understand. I was just talking this before. Matrix to matrix is a difference is there, and you can see the new peaks coming up in a new new matrix. You want to analyze those things the workflows. It's very easy for us to do that radar kind of workflows. Where if you see the mass spec, actually it works. It works on a static mode in the first quarter pole and static mode in the second quarter pole. This is called MRM. And if you see here, this MRM condition is changed to the scan condition. This is what called as radar. And if you see the chromatogram, how it looks like, you have your MRM transition is here, 
and you have the matrix of what is the matrix which you run it in the MS scan mode, you will be able to see this one. If you are finding something, the peak at the same retention time, you if you see the difficulty, this actually the uh, matrix enhancement, what you call it as. This actually inhibit your ionization part of your analysis. This understanding will come very fast by using the data. These are the things tools for the scientists who are working in the lab. At the same time, if you have two peaks, you just can understand that what is exactly this peak is from, the, from where this peak has come from. Look at here that this chromatogram on the topics of the chromatogram, you can transfer that into the scan. So this will conclude that how this peak is really coming from your matrix or it is coming from your analyte of interest. So these kind of things are very essential for a scientist who is working in the lab. And at the same time, sensitivity is also a very important topic. I, I, was, I would like to emphasize on this one because if you see a chromatogram just here, a chromatogram with the dilution, you can see that very clear chromatogram, there is no much matrix interference. And if you look at here, the same thing, if I don't dilute it, if you see this peak, the peak is uh, like, you know, with some matrix and the response is E raised to four and the e response is E raised to five. This is what the matrix interference, which actually subsidize the response of your analyte. But if I dilute that by 10 times, the matrix effect is gone. And this is, this is where you can do this analysis, how when the system is very high sensitive. So that is what the most important thing, what the aspect you need to understand. And these are the things that are quite you know, important for the scientist who is working in the lab. And this, is, this has actually made it very easy for all the users to work on uh, uh, mass specs easily on the multi residues. At the same time, the target links access has a standard addition procedure where what we are going to do is if you don't if you see no matrix is free from residues in fact i can say no matrix so you cannot get the black matrix in, in the world somewhere you know, maybe you need to uh, you know uh, clean it and use use it as a matrix but even though if some residue is present in the matrix we can use this uh, links access method where we can make a standard addition to that and generate the linear decor so this is what the software support what you will get when you when there is no you know uh, free from uh, pesticide free from matrix in fact and sample extraction is very crucial and of course uh, in multi residue analysis we can we have different different extraction procedures where i will just go go through them in fact i don't want to go through all these points there's a coaches is a, one of the most important thing what you you need to understand. understand here we have a two methods one is the AYAC. Other one is CEN method. When you say non-polar contents, you use for CEN method. We use for the GC, or the GC analysis you are regularly, regularly doing in the lab. At the same time, AYAC is for the polar pesticides. When you say polar to mid polar when you are working, or liquid you know, uh, water content uh, matrices when you are taking. So this is AYAC is the best procedure what you need to follow. At the same time, if you say oils and seeds, oil seeds, such kind of things, you know, when you say uh, non-polar content pesticides, if you are looking, in those cases, the CEN method is very much useful for us. And the simple procedure is very simple. Just take a uh, centrifuge and add a 10 grams of the sample. Then you add the purchase uh, sachet, open the purchase sachet, add to it, add it to that, vortex it, centrifuge it, dilute it and shoot it to the mass spec. Very simple. Most of the times, Dilute and shoot is the is a easiest part for any scientist who is working in the lab. Because if you are going for the solid phase extraction or something difficult task, is always, you know, it's a task only, in fact, for the scientists. But it is a very easy process for us to go forward. There are a few more methods which are, you know, uh, easily doable in the lab. I'll just show you later on. And at the same time, you see, this is, this is how it looks like, in fact, just Vortex it, centrifuge it, take the supernet and dilute and shoot. Dilute and shoot. This is what the method. And at the same time, if you have pigmentation, just use the charcoal uh, treatment to remove the pigments. Of course, these are the different methods available, which are with the AOAC and CEN methods from waters. Yes. At the same time, I was just trying to show that if, if, if it is not possible for us to go with our assays, 
or you know some of the pesticides can be done on the HLB. And the simple protocol recently I have I have generated for the this user in fact for the HLB protocol automation is uh, quite possible to do that. It is very simple procedure. Uh, of course, the HLB and MCX are two different cartridges. Not to miss anything in fact in this process. So we just run them through this uh, HLB as as MCX. After the extraction, we take that into you know uh, evaporator and reconstitute the sample. So here two different uh, cartridges are used uh, so that you will not miss any pesticides in fact you just pass through this and pass through this then take the pool both of the samples are eluted and then evaporate it and reconstitute it of course we have a ready-made method which is in the protocols are already generated and uh, most of the customers in Middle East region, I try to help them uh, with this kind of protocols and they are already working on this multi residue analysis. I'll show you some of the protograms. This is four pesticides in Vokra. And uh, this is uh, uh, one of the recent one, which is uh, done at the customer place, in fact. So they are working on the TPS micro and you look at the chromatogram and almost, you know, the runtime is very less. In fact, within 10 to 15 minutes, we can close all the contents. And, you know, even the difficulty is because I'm just kept this slide because 15 years back, I could not be able to do this one. In fact, where if you work on the positive and negative mode, we need to separate the chromatographically and do the analysis. But now the systems are so easy. Now they can, you can do the positive and negative mode, though the peaks are eluding at the same retention time. It's very easy now. Of course, sensitivity makes a difference. This I already showed you the chromatogram, the matrix effect where we can we can dilute and shoot here this is the one of the effluent toxin we are trying and just take the chili powder dilute with methanol vortex it centrifuge it dilute with water load into the mass spec so when you dilute and shoot the sensitivity is very good because you are re reducing the matrix effect at the same time you should keep in your mind that our mass spec should also be sensitive and we should also have a chromatographically strong Means when you say when your chromatograph is strong, you, you should be in a position to separate the matrix factors very easily. At the same time, your, your analyte of interest can be separated from the matrix. That's very important. Of course, these are the methods we established long back for tetracyclines, antibiotics, and sulfonamides. These are the different you know uh, multi uh, analytes which are you know checked on the shrimp matrix. In fact, this is actually the chromatogram from the shrimp. So we just uh, spike into the shrimp matrix and then uh, extract it with a simple liquid-liquid uh, extraction. We don't use coaches, we don't use SPE, nothing. It is a dilute and shoot like, like take it, add it to the formic acid, touchstone nitrile, vortex it, centrifuge it, dilute the sample and load it to the mass spec. So it's so easy, in fact, I can say. So now, now the multi ratio analysis becomes so easy because you have very good sensitive machines with you, in fact. Uh, this is uh, again the European, uh, not European, Japanese requirement. Mm -hmm. They were looking for uh, nitrofuran parent compounds. So usually people do the nitrofuran metabolites, but they requested for the parents because some of the contents after the you know shrimp, uh, uh, no uh, taking out of the shrimp from the water, these kind of uh, you know antibiotics are used for their you know uh, storage conditions. In fact, in those cases, this. Uh, test is very important. So where the nitrofuran parent compounds also can be analyzed very easily without any derivatization, without any derivatization. And recently these polar pesticides come up, very important, anionic polar pesticides. We have established this method, very easy method, which is called QUEE. It's a very simple dilute and shoot. It is a quick polar pesticide analysis. So it's very simple. Like, you know, just taking the sample, a homogeneous sample, and just take a 1% formic acid, vortex it, centrifuge it, dilute it, or filter it, load into the mass spec. How easy it is. So, without any derivatization, we can do this polar pesticide analysis. And uh, we have done a lot of work on this. In fact, the chromatographical condition and all that. We have used the helix column, DEA column, then we have created a polar pesticide column itself. Look at here. So these molecules, earlier days, we used to do derivatization. 
without derivatization, we were not able to understand them on the mass spec. So, but here without any derivatization and with a simple mobile phase condition and a simple extraction process, you can use this method straight away for the doing the anionic polar pesticides on mass spec. So it has become so easy now. And nothing is difficult now because the systems have become so easy, they can be modified. The liquid chromatography can be modified as a gas chromatography mass spec. So this is what the APGC just change the source on the top and turn it back. And you can you can see here the liquid chromatography is this side, the GC is from other side, and correct the mass spec on the center. So you can use the liquid chromatography and gas chromatography in single run, one, one after the other, in fact. So in single system, I need to say. And uh, this ionization technique is very simple. You are not going to fragment. GC normally works on the fragmentation, in fact. So you use an electro impact ionization technique where it breaks the molecule, in fact. But here, the molecule is not, will not be broken. It is intact. Like how the liquid chromatography, you are doing the protonation or deprotonation, the same process. Here, we are just trying to ionize the compound with the APCI mode. If you see here, in the APCI mode, and the, we are trying to see that ionization happens in the nitrogen, which is ab abundantly present at the vicinity of the corona pin. And the nitrogen charges is get transferred onto your molecule of interest. And the molecule gets charged. And if you, you can see that the, that, that is a part of ionization happens without breaking or it's a simple soft ionization technique, you can say. No need to do any hard ionization process here and the molecule is intact, even though it is non-polar compound. Yeah. And the advantage is very, very high when you see the uh, electro impact ionization technique, you will see that the base P or you will see the fragmented P, but not the molecular ion of your interest. But in case of in case of uh, uh, atmospheric pressure, uh, chemical ionization, APGC procedure, you can see your parent as well as you see the fragments. So in that process, what happens, you will have enough sensitivity and at the same time, this kind of fragmented molecule are many, in fact, there can be many molecules have a similar fragmentation and you don't know the specificity of that sometimes. Is it the degree of difficulty is very high in that. But to make so easy the APGC process where we are not going to fragment the molecule, you will be showing the molecule of your interest, in, in fact. And your results also very simple. You can see that you can see the sensitivity also is great. In fact, if you com compare to the electro impact radiation with the APGC. And, and at the same time, you know, similar fragmentation can be, you know, okay, you can understand the similar fragmentation molecule and we can separate them very clearly. And we have the pro protocols which are already mentioned. I was just explaining you that we have a liquid chromatography as well as a gas chromatography. And we have the written protocols on zero G2 excess QTOF to just to understand the screening as well as running the analysis in the MR. Of course, the targeted screening is, is just before I was talking about where you're comparing with the library, in fact. And you have the library with you, and you just compare the parent ion and fragment ion and mass accuracy are the points which they consider to understand that the molecule is present or offset. And non targeted screening, again, it's very difficult because you are trying to see that uh, you are trying to see that unknown compound which is not matching with the library, but you are only working on the accuracy, mass accuracy, and the fragmentation. Okay. So with that, you are going to see that what kind of elemental composition generated for the molecule of interest and that elemental composition, we are going to see that with the, some of the libraries which are available and then try to understand that this molecule is the structurally like this and this is the molecule. So that confirmation will come only for the non-targeted area. Of course, for that we have ready softwares and just to compare here is this example, just to say binary comparison where we are seeing that one sample to the another sample, what are the differences? So that differences actually explains you that one reason to another reason, what kind of pesticides are used by the farmers. That part also can be clearly understood because it's very important for that. You know, like, you know, one reason farmers are using these pesticides, another reason farmers are using different pesticides. So what are the differences also can be understood 
by the non target staining procedures. So this is how we can uh, we can conclude that how the unknown pesticides which are come into the, your matrix and which you are refer you are actually not doing the analysis of you know you don't have a standards to do the analysis but still you will be in a position to identify them very quickly on the theme of flight machine. So I think I take it an hour or more than that. So with this I thank you very much for Sam to give you this a chance for me to speak. Thank you. Thank you.